Welcome back. We're talking to Bas Van Leeuwen and Theo Eggington from Chillhop. Who are your main audience and how do they typically find Chillhop? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's an ever-changing presence, honestly, and uh, we're seeing we're seeing changes even now uh, start to appear. But I think in general, um, if we want to talk about like age brackets and stuff, that's that's easy. But overall, we see that it's it's just people who need to relax and and focus or seek escapism. There's this um, Portuguese word uh, I can't I'll butcher it if I try to pronounce it. It's like suadade, and it's like a um, it's like a sense of like a deep emotional state of nostalgic and profound melancholic longing for something or someone that you care for or something that you care for. It's like, it, there's no English translation. And I think when I actually look across the audiences and I, and I speak to them or I read what they put to us, it all very much comes back to that one thing of like, there's this kind of emotional state that the style of music puts you in. So I think from what people are looking for, that's how we find them in that sense uh, but from a like a, a more literal perspective YouTube for us is like a massive thing uh, that's where I think inherently this genre people go to find it other than the DSPs and uh, I think that's where we have our strongest presence so yeah um, there's there's everything from like uh, what we thought initially was just like college students you know using it to to study to but as we learn more and more about this audience we see this there's a lot of teachers that use it in the classroom there's a lot of uh, young professionals using it as well and in all different kinds of ways. Uh, and then there's the, the kind of endless trope that we hear that, you know, you can literally put this, this style of music to any situation in your life and it will, it will enhance it in some way. And I, and I firmly do believe that. And I think that's a, a big part of what we do. It's, uh, it's like the, it eliminates the awkwardness at a dinner party if you have it instead of silence. But on top of that, you can really kind of just shut the world out if you want to just listen to music and, and be on your own for a while. It's like almost everything it goes well with. I've actually seen a massive spike in uh, extreme sports enthusiasts lately uh, using Chill Hop as well. So it really, I'm never, never surprised anymore when I see a new demographic come into play. Oh, amazing. Extreme sports chilling out. That, that one I have to see. <laughs> the more extreme you go with these activities and uh, sports, especially, you know, you, you when you're thinking about like the the groups of people you might want to target, you obviously think sports, no way. But then you think about everything they do outside of the actual activity itself. You know, sports uh, professionals they have a lot of recovery time. They have a lot of time where they need to relax and stuff. And I think that's like a, a thing that's very easy to miss. But I think for me personally, that's what I see with like this extreme sports stuff. Um, it does accompany it in a way, but certainly in the times of recovery and stuff, it's kind of perfect for that also. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. Have you done any kind of um, formal exploration on the therapeutic benefits or the health benefits of Chill Hop and why it's actually connecting with people in that way? Yeah, we, we looked across the web and, and we, we've we uh, obviously done our due diligence to try and find something. Um, but I think we're, we're learning more about it uh, in a non-scientific way through through things like partnerships and, and accessing new communities. I think uh, the, the partnership with Relax Melodies we did with a relaxation and meditation app, like just showcased the malleability of the music and, and how it can help people and also just the feedback from our community. But yeah, maybe we need to hire a, a scientist to, to actually go into it, Bas. Good idea. Yeah. Well, so that was one of my questions as to why you think that, that you've been able to create such strong engagement from your audiences because they don't just like to listen to the music. They really get in, involved, don't they, and they discuss online. And so do you think that's it, that you've really connected with something very foundational for people? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what creates a connection between people because, like, if you have a, I mean, honestly, if you have a traditional label, you have an artist and there are two people that are a big fan of those artists, those are tend to create very strong uh, communities or relationships as well. So, but I think for, for us, it's a very, what do I say, universal sort of thing that's easy to connect with a lot of people. So it's easy to, uh, yeah, it's easy for people to, to connect through this shared sense of wanting more relaxation but i think that relaxation is just like one level of it you know the personality of it all is what really draws people to to stay mm-hmm.